Okay, this is video number two. And I showed you how I prepped it by pre-drawing it on a on a, a piece of white paper. Now I'm going to transfer this to the actual polycarbonate plastic sheet or plexiglass. And so I'm going to place it over it like this. I got it placed over it. Now you can tape it together. Uh, you don't have to. I usually don't worry about it, but it's a good idea for a beginner to tape it or clip it together so that when it shifts, you, uh, well, it won't shift if you have it uh, cl clipped together. I don't care about minor details. I've made so many of these, and uh, I just want to uh, grab a ruler or any straight edge because you want to make sure that you follow the same pattern, and these are straight edges, all of these. And by the way, these are many different kinds of lead liner. This is a kind of a silver. This is a gold. And this is the, the black. And I'm going to use the black. This is what I typically use. If you want to get fancy and make some... Uh, I had one of the students who wanted to uh, make a beautiful pot. And so she used uh, gold. Um, and it turned out incredibly well. Uh, the gold uh, looked very nice. Someone else used the silver. They were making... Um, not just a still life uh, pot, but something that had a lot more um, movement to it. And, and it was uh, of, a, of a bird and uh, the sky in the background and all that. And so uh, she used silver. So you can use different colors. I'm going to use black. And I'll show you right now how to do this. Uh, first of all, you want to make sure that the tip is not blocked some of these may have a block tip because other people have used them and i uh don't want to uh be too much trouble here so i'm oh here's a good one okay the other one was blocked i think we're going to use this one so uh i'm going to tilt this a little bit more so that you can see this. You may not be able to see my face easily, but we're going to uh, show you how to do this with the um, straight edge. Now, uh, it's going to blacken the straight edge, too. So here we go. We're going to start here. And I know I'm starting in the center, which I typically don't like to do. You should start at the top. And... Uh, did you see that? I started here and I did that. Now, uh, it's following my eyes, so it's having a hard time when I bend my head down. And so, I am going to go ahead here and do the next straight edge, which starts here and goes up. And stops there. And I stopped a little bit early, so I'm going to just freehand it. So, here we go again. We're going to follow the pattern that we've already drawn here. And uh, everything looks good. We're not moving it at all. Typically, if you're careful, you're not going to move it. But I, I recommend that everybody who's a beginner to tape it down. Taping it will interfere, though, with uh, some of the lines here. So that's why I didn't do it. And I'm going to be extra careful not to move anything. But I, I'm going to go ahead and do this line here. And this line here. Now you notice that the lines aren't perfect, right? Some lines are getting more than others. That doesn't matter. You can always go back and add some. And, uh, but you're getting the whole idea here of how to do this in a, in a, this is a geometric pattern, by the way, so this is going to be different than if you're doing a bird, you're going to freehand it. And uh, it's not tough. It's uh, 
really quite easy this material it's like a pen almost you're squeezing it gently as you're getting that out now if you do have a problem with smearing you can always uh, go back and scrape it off or you can wipe it off with a towel a paper towel before it, it, it dries either way it works and I've done both um, it's okay to make mistakes when you scrape it actually creates a neat effect scraping is okay and uh, you can see that this is already uh, really messed up there but that's all right uh, we don't care uh, if we if we get it off pattern a little bit like I said scraping it in the end is going to create a neat effect so I wouldn't worry too much about perfection see now I got some over here because I have a little excess you can take it off with your finger make sure everything straightened up though because when I did that I did move the whole that's why I, I typically don't like to do too many corrections while I'm uh, doing this part here because you might move the glass so you want to have plenty of room now you can use a smaller straight edge this straight edge is really too big I usually like a, a 12 incher this is not actually a ruler and I have probably other straight edges like this one here which is smaller I'm going to switch to this one and um, it's just a little uh, smaller I can get into tighter spaces now you can see what I've done there um, I'm going to work down here where you can see the effect more with the uh, camera notice I'm going back and forth you can do that too I'm getting different effects sometimes you want a hard line sometimes you want a kind of a this is going to be the earth and everything so it's going to have a little bit weird of a of a line system there and by the way getting excess paint so to speak on your rocks down here it doesn't matter you actually want the paint and this is wood so you know I don't mind getting uh, some excess liner everywhere uh, this is not meant to be a paint by number or painting or a sketch you want it to have character and uh, to go offline is not bad I am trying to keep it in line uh, quite a bit but not excessively so um, now you can see that I purposed some of these lines not to not to hit in perfect areas in other words I am actually changing the position of this line because I don't want it to be like a perfect juncture there uh, things this is kind of a prismatic effect so it's a it's somewhat abstract but at the same time it has a certain amount of of uh, dynamic meaning to it um, I didn't just draw these lines happenstance I did them in this place on purpose I don't know if you can understand why but uh, this one here is uh, pretty much perfect on the corner because it's supposed to radiate uh, light from the cross so I wanted that one exactly on the corner and um, now uh, these two kind of parallel each other but they're not perfectly parallel as you can see so the idea here is to create a little bit of imbalance you don't want it to be boring so see what I've done there okay so this this whole thing as you can see I'll show it to you right now uh, what we've done so far this is it and uh, on the white background so that's all I've done just to show you uh, the rest of it 
uh, I will do off camera here. But the idea is to give you the the basics on how to do this one step. And we will continue with the next lesson, which is going to show this completed, and we'll start the painting itself. And uh, that's our uh, complete.